I'm Justin Davis, and this is Drone Camps RC. <laughs> All right, guys, let's go ahead and uh, do a full review on the awesome Mini Bobby X115. I have it all ready to go here. I've got a little tattoo, 450 milliamp 2S battery. You know, 2S is a lot of fun to fly at the field. Uh, it's very light and very, very quiet. And also, the awesome quads, the flight controllers on these seem to fly pretty good, so I'm expecting good things out of this quadcopter. I did a little bit of flying with it earlier, and it's absolutely calm out here today, so it's a perfect day to do a flight demo. Let's go ahead and take it over to the launch pad, and I'll get it up in the air for you. And I'll do a little LOS flying with it, then we'll do some FPV. And by the way, after we do our flight test today, we'll take it into the studio on the bench, and I'll give you a little closer look at this frame. We'll go over the motors and the components that are on this one, but. Right now, let's go ahead and get it up in the air for you so you can hear what it sounds like. It is really quite smooth. And this is the PID tune right out of Betaflight. This is sort of an updated version of the old awesome F3 that they had. I've, like I said, I've flown other quads that they make and they all fly really smooth, really nice. Seems like my roll rate could be a little better, but I didn't go all the way around. Full out to the stick. There we go. I could probably up my rates to about maybe 80. That's a pretty tight roll. If I, if I really bang on the stick, it'll go for a tighter roll. Yeah, so you could probably up the super rate on this in beta flight just a little bit if you want a snappier roll, but right out of the box, it seems to fly really, really smooth. I love that. And I'm flying an Acro right now. It's a lot of fun to fly. Line of sight. Let's go ahead and bring it over here and do a punch out with it real quick. A little micro punch out. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Not bad actually. Not bad at all. Let's do some pitch bumps. Cool. And I say pitch, but these don't have a collective pitch on there like regular single hel single rotor helis do. We're not changing any kind of pitch, we're just adding more throttle into the motor. Nice. Decent for uh, 2S. And this can be a little freestyle ripper if you want it to be. I have a lot of fun around out here in the trees. Woo! That was close. The big rainbow. Try to keep this thing from hitting the runway. Really nice flyer. A little forward and a backflip. Awesome. Just like the brand, I guess. So, also, the video system on this, you guys, seemed to be pretty good. I, I was pretty impressed with my coverage out amongst the trees out here. I got pretty low in some of these trees and some pretty fun rows to speed down with these quads. So there's a lot of stuff to hit out there, but this was doing really, really good out there. As far as the video system goes, I'm really impressed with that dipole on there. And I'll tell you more about the specs on that video system when we get back into the studio, but let's go ahead and set it down now, guys. Let's do some FPV with this little mini Bobie. Here we go. Flies pretty nice.
All right, guys, welcome back to the bench. Let's go ahead and take a thorough overview of this quad. And I'm going to let you know what I think about this one. I'm also going to show you some pros and cons about this design, this particular frame, um, and uh, what I like about it also versus what I don't like about it. Um, and let's go ahead and, and get right into this. Let's talk about the flight characteristics first. Now, the flight characteristics, as you could see, right off my first battery, it flew awesome. So two thumbs up for the flight test uh, on the awesome Mini Bobi. Um, the, this size, the footprint of this quad is a little wider and a little bit bigger than the smaller version of this that I flew or late last year. I had it on the channel and um, that was a lot of fun to fly. It was really, really responsive and really snappy and a lot of fun. Now this one is a little bit different than that and is that is running larger props so i was expecting that this one's going to be a little bit better freestyle machine and it is nice that it does have 1105s on here because uh, i believe the other machine that i flew had 1104s and we have a 2535 prop on this quadcopter so a little bit larger prop than your standard two inch prop and this is quite a big difference between two inch and this larger prop is is actually giving me a lot more float for freestyle a lot of more time to react um, to your throttle changes now one thing that was kind of a con of this one right out of the, the, the gate was the fact that i didn't have a lot of room for a camera tilt but it sort of has this sort of it's this type of aio it's but it's not like the ones that are on um, the other types of quads that we've been flying with it's just that all-in-one vtx style camera but even though this doesn't have a lot of tilt it has a really wide sort of like a fish eye up in the front here field of view is really wide so i didn't need a whole ton of tilt but i did feel like that i needed more um, so you notice sometimes in my flight video that you can see that i just needed just a little more tilt because a lot of times i'm flying about like this and uh, this camera just it just needed a little bit more so that may be maybe one con of that and i could probably adjust that if i wanted to just trim this away a little bit with a dremel tool and bring this camera up a little more uh, for more experienced flyers but if you're brand new to fpb you're not going to be flying like me you're going to be flying a little bit slower and since this camera is set it's sort of set to a beginner type of level and you probably only got like maybe like 15 degrees right there of camera tilt but the nice thing about this frame on the top of this is that it is enclosing everything all the components are completely inside this frame and completely protected from your crashes so uh, this would be a good one for the new guys mainly because it flies great out of the box and the frame protects everything here and i didn't have any compromise with breaking the bottom unit body here and we'll talk about how thick this carbon fiber is and the grade of it in just a little bit but this is a really nice upgrade also because they did punch a hole in the side for the usb port on the last version of this i didn't have a usb port um, and that's kind of a bummer let me see which one that was that i was flying um, that was the actually the mini ub it was called i had the bind and fly ub there's the bobi and then there's the f100 and uh, now i've flown all three of them and i think that the bobi probably flies at the best out of all of them now, aside from having some nice and powerful 1105 motors, these are also 7,000 kV, by the way. So that's a pretty good high kV motor for a brushless micro. That's what you want. You want a really high kV. You also have a 10 amp 4-in-1 ESC underneath this plate right here. So um, a 10 amp ESC is not really going to allow you to run much more than 2S. You could probably sneak a 3S on there um, with a, I believe it has a 15 amp burst on this one. So you might get away with it um, if you decided to run this 3S. If 3S, it would be absolutely insane um, and probably end up being the type of quad that I would want to fly. But as a new person, a 2S machine, this is a really easy one to get into um, and just start ripping around and, and practicing flying FPV. Now it does come with a battery, which I really, really like because a lot of quads lately have not been coming with a battery and that really stinks. You get a brand new quad, you wait for it to come two to three weeks from China 
and then you have no battery. But Awesome is nice enough to include a 2S 500 milliamp battery and it's 25C, so it's a decent battery. You can get better ones, and I'll, I'll try to put a link down below for those. Like the Tattoo and the GNB batteries are way better than whatever off-brand this is. This is just kind of like a starter battery. And you'll also notice that I did upgrade the back connector on here. It does come with a red JST style connector, and uh, it's a long, skinny, and narrow one. Now this one is the shorter XT30, and the XT30 is just going to give you a better power coming from the battery to the power system. It's going to give you a better amp draw uh, on the battery, so it's going to give you a little more horsepower feeling when you punch the throttle. So here's a little side view of this frame and this overall power system that's on this quad. It's a pretty cool looking profile from the side. It's pretty narrow and I really like that it does have the landing gear that come down and it already has motor guards there for you. That's kind of nice. And it does seem to be kind of a micro brushless low rider of sorts because it is pretty narrow through here. It compacts everything in the side of this frame, the ESCs, the flight controller, and the BTX all in there, and your receiver is hiding in there. So like I said before, nothing is sticking out. Uh, and even from the front, it kind of has that nice flat profile. The props are actually a little bit lower than the canopy itself, so it really does have a nice smooth aerodynamic, and that might help with the flight controller uh, being nice and smooth. And normally they do give you an extra canopy with this quadcopter, but I didn't seem to get one in my box. Um, so maybe if you get lucky, you might actually get two canopies. Usually they give you a black and a white one inside the box, at least with the UB model I did. Uh, but I did get two sets of props. I got an extra set of these props in there. Those are the 25 35s. I'll have to put a link down below for these, but black and white set there. And I got to say, these props feel, and you can hear how they sound, they kind of sound a little bit like they might be a little bit brittle compared to um, some of the other gem fan style props these feel like they could um, possibly not bend back like some of the other props they feel a little more um, a little more plasticky rather than um, a really stronger more durable type of plastic it feels a little bit cheaper but they fly super smooth uh, i would just go ahead and try to order an extra set a couple props if you uh, a couple packs of props if you decide to get this model and i'm just going to go ahead and take this canopy off and show you the entire assembly here if you remove these two top screws right here these two screws will come out those are both phillips head screws so once you remove those you can get to your flight controller you can see your vtx and your camera the way your camera's mounted and everything and i'm going to show you a con of this design as well if they didn't change this setup. Nope, they didn't change it. Um, so inside where this camera is mounted, this is um, just kind of temporarily glued to that spot right there. And the last flight test that I did with the UB, I had a pretty hard crash and I was flying some playground equipment, but I hit like a steel pole and this broke loose. So um, this is not a very solid design. It will pop off if he's hit something super hard, but uh, that's kind of to be expected if you're playing around, uh, flying around playground equipment. But this camera is plugged right into the F3 flight controller right here. And the VTX is actually integrated into the flight controller. So that's kind of what makes this board a little bit different than some of the other ones out there. Um, this is, is definitely one of the first true AIO cameras out there. Um, it's a very, very easy to set up. Um, I've set these up on other quads and I had no problem doing that. Your camera plugs into this slot right here and it actually does plug in without needing any wires coming up from the ESCs to this top board right here. You have a little pin connector right in the middle right there that just simply plugs in. And before you do your first flight with this quad, whatever you do, just figure out a way to secure this cable right here because this cable goes directly to the bottom of the ESC right there. And if this gets pulled off, if your battery comes off, this little rubber band right here will not keep a battery from ejecting off the bottom of this quad. You need to have some kind of Velcro on the bottom here instead of this rubber band. This rubber band right here um, is probably my biggest pet peeve of this entire frame. Whoever designed this um, needs to redesign it because you can't really get a strap through here you you really need to uh, just figure out a way to put a strap through here and out the other side and just use a regular battery strap a micro battery strap would be way better than a rubber band this is just total trash right here um, but like i was saying before take a zip tie 
and secure this battery wire right to the side of the frame right there. Make sure it's above or below the arm. Make sure it's not rubbing on the arm when you do secure it so that the carbon fiber doesn't cut that cable. But once you have it secured there, you're not going to tear up your Form 1 ESC if the battery flies off because of this piece of crap right here. And coming right off the top of this flight controller, you do have this little dipole antenna. And this is actually doing pretty good out in the field during my flight test. I was pretty happy with the way this performed. It didn't have a whole lot of static. Um, it didn't have the best penetration down below the tree line, but I, I feel like wherever I went out in the field, I had a really good camera setup coming back to my uh, video feed, coming back to my goggles. The camera setup is actually quite good with this. Now I do have another antenna sticking up right here, and that's coming from my receiver, which is just kind of put down here as sort of a second thought. Now, um, this is not really a good place for this. I would probably relocate this. If I bought this quad, I would take this receiver and move it up on top of this stack right here because there is room. You could even mount it with a little bit of tape, a little bit of sticky side tape right here. And then you could have this antenna coming out the top of on the side right here where these two are right here. You can put a little bit of a zip tie there and you can run the wire out or you can run it out this hole right here uh, or however you'd like to do that. Just get it on top of this quad and sticking out a little bit further and far enough away from your props because the way it comes, it seems like the props are going to eat up this antenna. So uh, one thing to look out for with this particular frame. Now I will say that one pro of this frame is that it does go back together pretty easily. And it looks like one of those holes is for a bolt. So you're not gonna be able to run any type of zip tie through there. You might have to actually um, make your own hole for putting a zip tie on the side of this frame. Just make sure it sticks up, use a little bit of heat shrink and put right over top of your antenna and the zip tie. And then you're going to uh, use a little bit of heat and melt that down so it's nice and sturdy off the top of your quad. But that's as easy as the frame goes back on the top, the canopy goes back on top of the quadcopter quite easily. So um, those are the suggestions that I would give you guys if you decide to get this particular frame, this airframe. But let's go ahead and set this quad on the scale. Let's see what this one weighs. Now I've got the scale and I'll go ahead and set the quad on the scale right here. Just find a good place where it's not hitting the ground and show you what we get here. This is a super lightweight quad, by the way, uh, even lighter than the other 2S machine that I flew, the FPV Egg, last week. So this is 57.3 grams. This is really, really light for a 2S machine. And even with the 2S 500 battery on here, you can also fly a 350 if you want to go even lighter, but that's under 100 grams, which is totally insane. I'll even put that little annoying little rubber band back on there and it's 90.9 .9 grams total takeoff weight. That is just a lot of fun for under 100 grams with a great, great power to weight ratio. So I think with the Betaflight OSD, the ability to be able to run 3S uh, or 2S, I think that one puts this one in the top category from this company so far. So uh, if you were gonna buy any of the awesome quads out of the three that are on the side of this box, the UB, the Bobi, and the F100, I would absolutely go for the Bobi X115 before any of the other ones because that also does fly particularly awesome. So uh, I really like this quad a lot for a 2S ripper and it's pretty compact and clean design. The nicest thing is that the tune on it is actually really nice because um, some of the other quads that I've gotten from China out there just don't have a very good tune on it. And that is a huge problem and a disappointment to somebody buying it. But that's why you're watching this review so that I can give you the honest truth about this and uh, some of the things you need to look out for if you decide to buy this quad. And that way you can get the best idea of what this quad is all about. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. This has been a lot of fun for doing this review for you guys. Another awesome quad in my shop is always a lot of fun. I really like flying these quads. So thanks again. If you're out in the field and somebody looks like they need some help, as always, try to help others out there. It's uh, kind of our drone camps model. So thanks again for watching. And uh, hey, guys, click that subscribe button. That would help me out a lot. I'm Justin Davis. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.